This is about a road cut of the Kaiser and Tanolaway formations in central Bedford County. The road cut is in the center of this air photo, west of the town of Bedford. This is a geologic map of the area from Pennsylvania Geologic Survey's map 61. The Kaiser and Tanolaway are mapped together because they are both limestones and they usually have a gradational contact. I'm uncertain of the position of the contact but from the map the road cut is probably the Kaiser Formation. We'll zoom in for a closer look. The road cut is along Route 30 between the Turnpike Overpass and Point Road. Here is an overview looking at the north side from above the center of the south side. The beds dip steeply to the northwest. The west end of the outcrop is near the contact with the overlying Old Port Formation. This is an overview of the outcrop. Notice there are three telephone poles. I'll reference the location of interesting features on the outcrop to the telephone poles. They are numbered 8, 9, and 10. This is west of pole 10 on the north side of the outcrop. It's limestone with chert nodules next to the pencil. Here's a close-up. The chert is the darker material. This is also west of pole 10, but closer to it. There are thin laminations to the right, and a possible thrombolite or algal mound. Here's a close-up, and the thrombolite is indicated here. Let's take a close look at this part of the thrombolite. First, here's a small fault which does not go through the thrombolite. This indicates the algal layer grew over the fault, or perhaps it continued to grow while the fault developed. Also notice the pattern of laminations above the thrombolite. They drape in between the peaks of the top of the thrombolite, most obviously here. This indicates the peaks on the upper surface were present during deposition of the laminations and that the thrombolite is not a deformational feature. Pole 10. Here's a view of the south side of the road cut from pole 10. We are looking down onto the tops of the beds, which is like looking at a sequence of ancient ground surfaces or sea bottoms. But let's continue looking at the north side. Here are some thinly laminated beds between pole 10 and 9. And here's a close-up with the pencil for scale. This is also between pole 10 and 9. The beds are relatively thick and featureless here. This is an outcrop overview just west of pole 9 in the center of the road cut. Pole 9. This is a typical view of the thinly bedded limestone between pole 8 and 9. Also, here is a close-up of the thin laminations in the same vicinity. Pole 8. Just east of pole 8, the beds are structurally deformed by kink folding. Take a close look. Okay, now imagine walking directly across the road to the south side. Here, looking down on the top of the bed, are several thrombolites, or algal mounds, to the left of the pencil. Here's a close-up of some of them. Moving over to the west and up section, there are some trace fossils exposed. They are the marks left by burrowing organisms and this type is called Diplocraterion. 
They're all over the surface of this bed. Here's a close up. This is my favorite part of the outcrop. It is west of the Diplocriterion exposure and upsection. Polygonal mud cracks are evident in the center of the image, and erosion of the outcrop has proceeded along the ancient mud crack surfaces. Mud cracks form in areas where wet sediment dries out, such as in the intertidal zone. Here is an overview from the north side of the road. These are the last two locations. Further to the west and up section, there is a remarkable thrombolite, shown here. Here it is with stratigraphic down shown as down in the image. The algal structure is approximately two-thirds of a meter high, and the overlying beds clearly drape the structure. Thanks for watching. I hope you can check it out in person.